In the case of domain and range, we're mainly concerned with uh, graphs of uh, equations. So let's just say I had some sort of graph here. Um, maybe I want it in black instead. So let's say I have some sort of graph and in my graph I've got some sort of equation that, uh, I don't know, goes like this. Maybe some weird sort of curvy looking thing. And I might be concerned with where can my function exist or where can this graph be? Um, and I have to take a look at what x values you know, is it valid for and what y values is it valid for. So in that sense, I'm looking at what the possible x values are or y values by looking at a graph. Now before we begin, uh, I think it's important to look at some notation. So maybe I'll just uh, erase this little one right here. So the very first thing to look at is uh, maybe some of the notation. So what we might do is uh, we might say, for example, this is an, uh, an answer. We might say that the domain is like this. This is a commonly written thing. This X with this weird looking E thing and then this R. What this means is X is an element of real numbers. So that's a math way of saying X can be any real number. Now, a real number, uh, the only uh, thing I can think of as not a real number is something that's um, like square root of negative 1. We call that a complex number. But in this sense, if there's no problem with x's, if it can be anything you can imagine, then we say x is an element of real numbers. That's one way to write things. Now, x might actually be more limited. Maybe we say, I don't know, x is between, uh, let's say, 10 and uh, 0 like this. This notation. What this would mean is x is, let's see now, this tells me that, well, actually, first of all, if I tried to hide everything, uh, I think I can do this like this. Whoops, hold on a second here. Yeah, there we go. So let's say I just look at the left side, zero with this alligator with x. What this really tells me is x is greater than zero. That's what this left side says. Okay, so x is greater than zero. So I better uh, write that down. So x is larger than 0. I don't know if you've uh, learned it this way, but uh, my teacher taught me that it was like it was an alligator that's eating something, you know? So in other words, it always wants to eat the bigger thing. So in this case, x is bigger than 0. That's because imagine it's an alligator here that's really hungry. I'm a really lousy artist here, but uh, I'm not sure what an alligator looks like, but it's got some legs here and it looks really mean. So it's like the alligator always wants to eat the biggest thing here. So in this case, if we want to eat something really big, this is like, uh, like this. So uh, maybe this is the the big alligator here wanting to eat this. So in this sense then, so x is greater than zero, but at the same time, it's also less than or equal to 10. In other words, 10 is bigger than x, right? Because the alligator wants to eat the 10 in this case. So if we wanted to write this down, we'd say x is larger than zero. Uh, we could say, but less than or equal to. Do you notice this one has a little line underneath? So that means that less than or equal to 10. So that means it can be, it can't be zero, but x can be one. It can be 0 0.5. That's a little bit bigger than zero. It can be any number I can think of up to and including 10. So in other words, it can be 9.99999 and it can be 10. But in this case, it can't be zero. Um, it can be anything larger, so it could be like 0 0.00000001, then it's okay. So x is larger than 0, but less than or equal to 10. That's the type of notation we would use. Now let's look at what domain and range actually mean. So the domain, what that is, uh, we're looking mainly then at the x values. So I would say maybe it's uh, what the x values can be. So what they're allowed to be. Okay, so in that case, uh, we're going to be looking at this. So x values, what they can be. And the range is just the opposite. So it's what the y values can be. Now, this might not seem so apparent. So I'm going to show you this. What I, what I usually do here in this sense, um, I usually basically when I'm doing this, I basically scan here left to right. I'll show you this in a second. Left to right. And here I scan 
uh, bottom to top. And I'll explain what I mean by this here. So bottom to top. So I'll give you an example. I think that'll make a lot more sense here. So if I do an example, give the domain and the range for this function, f of x equals x plus 1. Remember, don't get freaked out by f of x. That's just like saying it's y equals x plus 1. So I think in order to do this, it would probably help to graph this. So I'll do a little simple graph. Whoops, I think I want my line in uh, black. So I'll do a simple graph here. I'll do x here and I'll do y. Now I'll make my graph go 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So it helps to label it in order to really know what's going on here. Ideally, you'd be using some really nice graph paper, and uh, so this would look much more uh, nice than mine looks. But this is a rough idea of a graph here. Now, if I want to do this graph, this is a linear graph. That means um, it, the, the shape of the graph is a straight line. And if you remember things about straight line graphs, this first number right here tells you the slope of the graph. So in other words, it's got a slope or a gradient of what's like this little stealth 1 here. So this is a 1 times x plus 1. This is the y-intercept. So that means I know that there's a point right here. I know that for sure that where it crosses the y-axis, that's here. Right, because when I make x equals 0 here, imagine this is 0, then this becomes just 1. So uh, that would be that. But I know that for every 1 I go over, I have to go up or down by the slope. So I take this point here, I go 1 over, and then I go, well, the slope or the gradient is 1. So in this case, I go over 1, up 1, and there we go. And then I can draw another point over 1, up 1, over here. I can go back one, down one if I want. I can go back one, down one. So in other words, my graph is going to be some sort of straight line like this. Now it goes on forever, right? This graph goes way up high this way and it goes way down here. So the question would be, where can I find my x values? In other words, where does it exist? So when I talk about domain, I mean we need to scan from left to right. So in this case, let's look at what the x values are allowed to be. So what I imagine here is that I'm not going to start off here in the middle of the graph, here in the middle of these axes. I'm going to go along the x-axis and go way off to the left here. And think about it. Way over here at negative infinity, or negative, I don't know, think of a big number, negative 5,000. Way over here. Can I find my graph at that x value? Sure. It's just way down here, right? This is what my graph does. So way at negative infinity, it's just down here. So I, I see my graph, it exists, so yep, it exists. How about over here in the middle? Is there anywhere where the graph can't exist? No problem here, because over at this way negative value, maybe it's negative 10, I can still find my graph. It exists at that x value. We don't care what the y value is, we just say, does it exist with that x value of negative 10? Sure, it's down here. And as I scan from left to right, hopefully you'll see that it doesn't matter what I make my x values. They can be anything from negative infinity all the way over here to zero, all the way plus. Because think about way over here at plus infinity, way off this side. Where do I find my graph? Well, just way up high. Because this graph here keeps going off the screen here. So in that sense, there's no problems with my graph, which means the x can be any value. And remember before, I taught you that that meant x is element of real. In other words, there's no problems with x's. They can be any real number you can think of. Negative 5.28, yep, it exists. Right, that's a positive 3 pi. No problem, that's like 6, uh, that's um, 9 point something-ish. So it doesn't matter what you make um, the x values, it exists. Now what about the range? The range is the same thing, only you scan from bottom to top. So in this case, way down here at negative infinity in the y's, it exists. It exists over here. As I scan from bottom to top, it exists anywhere I go over here. See, I can still find it over here. At plus 3, where do I find the graph? Oh, over here. At plus infinity, where do I find the graph? Oh, way over here. So there's no problem with y's either. So in that sense, I can also say that y is an element of real. In other words, this is the most boring kind of domain and range kind of question because there's no problems. X can be anything you want and Y can be anything you want.